In this video, I'm gonna be giving you the complete roadmap to going from $0 to $10,000 a month in sales on Amazon. We're gonna go over everything from finding your first product, getting ungated, sending your products into Amazon, and all the tools that you really need to get set up in this business to do $10,000 a month. And one thing I wanna say right from the jump is that $10,000 in sales probably feels really difficult right now. It's the most difficult $10,000 in sales you'll ever do. Once you get to that milestone though, everything's gonna start making more and more sense. So this video is gonna be super, super important for you to get over this initial learning curve of Amazon FBA. But if you guys are brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields from Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller. I've been selling on Amazon since 2018, sold over $3 million on Amazon, and I've been able to help thousands of other Amazon sellers find success on Amazon as well. So I'm super excited to share those tips with you today. And just real quick before we jump into it, another thing I'd highly recommend if you're a beginner Amazon seller is jumping in our free Amazon seller Discord community. There's over 50,000 people in there sharing a ton of information. Great place to go, get networked with the community, start asking questions. So go ahead and hop in there, but let's Let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, guys. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and just give away the sauce with everything you need to start a five figure a month Amazon business. It's not nearly as hard as you might think. So let's go ahead and start with the obvious starting point, right? What am I going to sell on Amazon? So here's an example of a product that my product sourcing team found. We found it on the soccer website. We looked at it. It's all legit. We checked it in Trustpilot, all that kind of stuff to make sure the site is credible. And I noticed that this soccer wire here is selling for 18 bucks over here on Amazon. That exact same product is selling for $45. And so this is where we'll get into the first two tools that I would highly recommend. This is our tool seller amp over here. It's less than 20 bucks a month. It does a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to be showing off in this video. And this tool down here is Keepa. It's 20 bucks a month. Those are the only two tools you guys need at the very beginning. So don't go out, don't spend a ton of money on the hundred dollar a month softwares, spend $40 a month on software, and you're going to be good. And I'll show you how to source tons of product using these tools. But looking into this product here, we can see it's going for 45 bucks. It sells about 26 times a month. So it's not the fastest seller in the world, but I just want to show you one quick example of a winning product here. So I'm not, you're just making this all up, right? So so this product is selling for 18 bucks. If we plug it into seller amp over here, that's going to give us a profit of $11.83, 65% ROI, which is a pretty decently high ROI. Typically I'm looking for about 35% ROI or $3 profit minimum. And that's just kind of something I try to look out for to make sure that buying that item is worth my time. There's going to be enough wiggle room in case the prices drop at all. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. The next thing I'll just kind of quickly look into this item as well down here on Keepa. This shows you the past history of the item. So typically what I'm looking for down here is to make sure that the price that we want to sell it for is actually consistent. So if we jumped in here and let's say we thought we were going to sell for, you know, 70 bucks, like it was up here when really there's no sales. So this green sales rank line showing us when there's sales, it's just kind of steadily going up. There's no drops. Nobody's making sales on this product at 70 bucks. So if I was going in here and sourcing it for 35 bucks or something like that, I would want to avoid this product. But since it's more consistently selling for like 45 bucks, you know, down here is 39 bucks, but there's still plenty of wiggle room. If it goes down to 39 again, this product seems a little bit more interesting, right? Because it's very consistently at that $45 price point, that $45 price point, we're decently profitable right? So that is just kind of a quick winning product here, just an example. So with this in mind, I want to go ahead and show you guys how you can find a product like this for yourself. So using seller ramp over here, we're going to do what's called reverse sourcing. This is by far the best way for you guys to get started as new Amazon sellers, because you don't need to understand the brands or the types of products or anything like that about the products that you're looking for. So on this product here, we know that some of these sellers are probably doing the exact same business model as us, right? We can buy it from this website. We can sell it over here. So it's pretty reasonable that a lot of your products are going to be sold by other arbitrary sellers who are going to have other items that you can do the same thing, right? So it's kind of, you know, seeing what ideas they've had for products, seeing if we can find it cheap enough, like we found this soccer ball here. So I went ahead and I clicked on this, you know, this seller over here, they've got 62 feedback. That means they are decently large, but they're not, you know, doing crazy big volume. They've probably sold in the neighborhood of a few hundred thousand dollars. Reviews are really hard to come by on Amazon. So that tells me that they kind of know what they're doing, but they're not going to be, you know, so expert at it that we're not going to be able to figure out where they're getting their products. So let's just go ahead and head down the list here. So this, this one right here, especially with with some of these products, the titles are messed up and they can be a little bit harder to find, but let's go ahead and dig into it. So I'm going to press the Amazon button and I'm going to press the Google button. And the reason I want to look into this product in particular is because right here, this max cost is saying that if I can buy the soccer ball for, you know, basically 18 bucks or less, I'm going to be within those profit thresholds. So 35% ROI, $3 profit. And we just found this soccer ball over here for 18. So maybe we can find that same ball for 18 somewhere else. So let's go ahead and check it out here. So we've got this product for 36. Yeah, we need to find it for solid like 17 bucks. So one thing you can do 
you. So it did originally Google Nike Academy team. That's probably not going to get you much over here. It's a much more specific product name. So if you just hit the Google button, it's going to automatically copy this, paste it into Google, search it for you. So just kind of one of those quick time savers you can do with Celeramp. And then let's dig a little bit deeper. So this could be that soccer ball right there. Maybe even at that same source that we just found. So 2250, we needed it a little bit cheaper than that. So 2250. So it's, you know, $1 in profit, but that we're not in the business of uh, making $1 in profit at a time. So the next thing that you could do on websites like this is start hunting for coupons, right? So we found a product lead that is very, very close to profitable, but we're not quite there. So, you know, maybe I, I check the Capital One shopping extension. Sometimes there'll be some coupons. Maybe this is kind of a smaller website, so it might be uh, harder to find. And then the other thing you can do is literally just go pro direct coupons here, right? So you can go ahead and poke around through here, see what kind of potential coupons you might be able to get. So you got this, you know, 20% off potentially. We could see, you know, love soccer. So with these coupons in mind, there's going to be a lot of opportunity where you can go in and get those extra discounts. So you could go ahead and copy this, paste it in there, see if it works. That would be crazy if it works. Probably not though. But that's kind of the, a big part of doing this online arbitrage business, right? Is finding a product that's close and then going the extra mile doing the work that other Amazon sellers don't want to do. There's going to be a lot of low hanging fruit, but then there's also going to be products like this one that are a little bit harder to find, harder to figure out how you get them profitably. But if you do, there's going to be less competition. So, you know, on an item like that, we found it for $22.50. We could dig a little bit deeper and see what's going on there, but let's, let's just for the sake of variety, let's see what else they got here. So it looks like they're, they're selling a lot of Nike products for whatever reason. If you're a brand new Amazon seller, I typically wouldn't recommend selling like apparel and shoes and that types of products. I know a lot of new sellers jump into that. Some of these products are fine. Like, you know, this wallet, that kind of stuff. I really like starting with low return categories because if you jump in and you're not really sure what to look for in a product and you're selling, you know, high return categories like shoes, you might have a harder time making profit. And then if you started with like grocery or something like that. So let's see what else we can figure out here. So wallet purse, this is an interesting kind of, I don't know if I've ever seen this type of product here. So another thing to do is go to like Google shopping. We could see who might have it. So this could be like a, a more limited, harder to find type item. I'm having a hard time finding it. So we can just jump on again there. Let's see, so this mini backpack coming into back to school. That's another thing you guys want to think about as you are sourcing products, the seasonality, right? So I'm, I'm making this video in, in late July. We're about to go into back to school season. So there's going to be a lot of higher demand for backpacks. So with that in mind, there might be, you know, prices raising faster sales, that kind of stuff that we'd want to kind of be on the know on. So we could have it there for, for 20 bucks, maybe for 25. And then again, we just go ahead and jump in here, see if we can find any extra coupons. Probably not going to find anything here within the, you know, a couple minutes here, but still a good kind of exercise. Show you guys kind of what we're looking for. And if you want to go way more into detail on just the sourcing portion, there's a ton of videos on my channel that you guys can check out after you watch this, this step-by-step -step kind of bigger picture video. So let's see, this one is going for 20 bucks. So we can make sure it's the same. It seems like it might be a little different, like the print cuts off a little bit. Can't tell if that's intentional. So it's an interesting picture. I can't tell if the picture is just wrong or if the product actually looks like that. There's a good shot that it actually looks like that because this one is different. This one's, you know, 26 bucks and then yeah, so seems like it might be a little bit harder to find. And another thing I want to look at here is to show you guys an example of that seasonality within the Keepa chart. Another reason why it's so important to, to have these tools, you're kind of sourcing blind without it. So we can zoom out and see, you know, last year when we had that back to school season, this is a pretty, you know, a pretty tame example of it, but we do still see it. I mean, you know, back here, you see how the sales rank dips way down. It starts selling way faster just for a little bit. It doesn't seem like, you know, a mini backpack might not be the best back to school type backpack, but you can see that new sellers dipped way down. The price jumped up a little bit. You can see it went up to like even 50 bucks, right? So went to 50 bucks right there. The seller count went way down. So that could be something interesting, right? So if we found that for, you know, for 25, if it goes back up to 50 bucks and that's a profitable item, typically I wouldn't want to, especially for your first product, you don't want to buy like speculative products, but I wouldn't be super surprised if this product kind of becomes profitable before long. You can even see the price jumping up already when we're just now at, you know, July 20th, right? So, you know, we, we found it for 25 bucks. I think we found the actual one for, for 25. And right now we could already get, let's see, like, uh, yeah, 25% ROI, something like that. So there's something that's, you know, even closer, right? So no major winners within those first you know few products there but like i said it's going to take some time usually to find that first product but i would highly recommend you do it with reverse sourcing here another way that you guys can source products i'll just kind of briefly touch on here if you'd rather go to like a you know a sale or something like that so just for the sake of example i know that you know nike is doing a sale right now you can do this with anybody that's having a sale you just jump in go to shop and then once you're within these sections here something i really like to take advantage of is kind of buying items that are on sale plus you're able to stack a coupon on it so something like this you can go in here, click on this item, and then using Celeramp, we can kind of speed up our manual sourcing as well. So if you just click this extension up here, the Celeramp extension, it's going to automatically paste that title into Amazon for you. And then you can start, you know, kind of poking around, seeing if any of these shoes match the ones over there. I would imagine these are like, you know, they're selling the colors that people want a little bit less, all that good stuff, but plenty of stuff to dig through there. It also works a lot better with products that are, you know, there's a million variations of the Air Max 97s, right? But if we go into something like this, we can check this out. You can also just like, 
like highlight over it, right click and then SAS search. It's going to search whatever text that you highlight over. So we can see if we can find this listing here. So here's the boy blazers. Yeah. And then once we get right here, we can see there's that main listing it looks exactly the same. So instead of having to paste it into Amazon, trying to find the listing, we can do it all within here and jump straight into the Amazon listing. See if we can find a potential product that might be profitable underneath this product. So in this case, it looks like, you know, the max price is 115 bucks. We'd be buying them for 105 plus a 25% code. So, you know, not quite profitable. Another one of those things that's a little bit close, but again, you guys can check out a ton of product sourcing videos on the channel. Showed you that example, found a couple close products there. Don't want to get hung up on product sourcing here too long because I want to get into the next step of the process here. So after you've sourced some products, you've done order sourcing, you've done manual sourcing, whatever kind of sticks out to you as something that you might be a little bit better at. The next step of the process that, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about is getting ungated. And so getting ungated on Amazon is way easier than it used to be. It could get harder. So take advantage of Amazon as it is right now and go get ungated in some products, right? So I'm going to show you the kind of the buy the book way first, and that's going to a legitimate wholesaler frontier co-op. This is the exact wholesaler I used to get approved in grocery, you know, over three years ago at this point, I guess. And so let's say that you want to sell the beauty category and you also want to sell Burt's Bees as a brand, right? So you can double up in both. So we can go into Burt's Bees here on a wholesaler. You can also go to a lot of online retailers that sell, you know, name brand products, especially if they're big name brand retailers. We've had success getting ungated with those online invoices. Despite what other you know, people might tell you, you can get ungated a lot easier than it used to be. And basically what that means is as a new Amazon seller, they're not gonna, typically going to trust your account to sell a bunch of, you know, big name brands like Burt's Bees, Nike, all that good stuff, but it's not too hard to get approved. So what I'm looking for on a wholesaler like this is just a product that, you know, kind of matches something on Amazon. So we can go over here to Amazon. Let's go ahead and check it out. So we can see this, you know, Burt's Bees, Beeswax, Lip Balm Tin. So we could even just go in here. Let's copy that. Lip Balm Tin. And then seems like that's probably it right there. Yeah, probably just a new packaging or something like that, but that's, you know, 0.3 in, 0.3 ounce tin right there. I would say that's probably our product there. So if you want to get ungated in Burt's Bees, this would probably also ungate you in the beauty category. Yeah, you can see right there that it's in beauty and personal care. And as a new Amazon seller, you're going to be restricted to sell most of these major categories. So what you need to do is go over to Frontier Co-op here. You can also go to, you know, vitacost.com, iHerb, something like that, that formats their receipts, you know, a certain way that, especially if it has your business billing address on it, that's the big one. That's the the one that Amazon's going to want to see that kind of proves that your company bought this product. So that's why I like using wholesalers if you can, because they're going to put those invoices in proper formatting for Amazon. So all we'd have to do is buy 10 units of this. We would grab this ASIN over here and then we'd go over to Amazon Seller Central. You're just going to hit the sandwich menu up here, go to catalog, go to add products, and that's going to take you right here. So let's say we were going to source this, you know, this Burt's Bees product right there. We'd go ahead and grab that ASIN. Again, the, this ASIN is kind of the unique product code for this item. Go over here You'd say select a condition and then say new. And for you, it's probably going to say apply to sell. So that's why I had that other example. This is something I'm still gated in. So for me, I'm going to go new, apply to sell, and then it's going to send me to kind of an application process. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to request approval to sell this brand. Then it's going to say, okay, you're requesting approval. You know, please provide at least one invoice for this product. And after you purchase those, let's say it's the Burt's Bees products in this case, you're going to take that invoice, make sure you follow all the guidelines here, the big ones being buying 10 units of it, and then also having your business information, the business information that matches your Amazon seller account on that invoice. You're just going to go ahead and upload that PDF right here. Typically that'll take, you know, anywhere from a few hours to a couple days. For me, like my first couple on gates getting like grocery and all that kind of stuff was literally a couple hours and I was able to immediately start sourcing some products, finding some good stuff. But that's kind of the, the short version of getting ungated there. It's really not as hard as, as a lot of people think. And it holds so many people back from making a ton of money on Amazon. So now you guys are equipped to source products, get ungated. So let's talk about the next step of the process. So the next step of this process here is after we've bought our product, we've got ungated and now we need to actually figure out how to send these products into Amazon. So the big advantage, the reason that Amazon FBA was so attractive to me is all I have to do is source good products and send it into Amazon. I don't have to worry about shipping the products up, doing customer service, all that kind of stuff. All I have to do is get good at product sourcing and then build a team that's good at finding products that are, you know, there's a mismatch in prices, right? So this is an example of one of those products we found. So now that we've found our profitable product, we need to keep everything organized and then go ahead and send it into Amazon to take advantage of that FBA fulfillment. So what I'll typically do after we purchase a product, I will use use the Google Sheets feature here to keep everything super organized. So in this case, let's say your name is Mike, you want to send it to your sheet so you keep everything kind of in place. You remember what you paid for everything. All you got to do is click your name there and then it's going to send the information about that product to a Google Sheet. So here you can see you know, the date we sent it, the product name, the ASIN, the Amazon link, 
you can go ahead and paste, you know, where we bought it from, our source link. And you can really include anything you want about these products on the back end. And to do this, all you're really going to need to do is go into the back end of your Selleramp account, you go Google Sheets, set up. And then here in this example, where we're with the Mike Google Sheet, you can just go in here, edit it, and then you can drag and drop, add, you know, a ton of different data points here. You can put it in whatever order you want. So this is different. I have different use cases for a lot of this, but the main thing is just stay organized with the products you're buying. Make sure you're at least storing where you bought the products, what you paid for them, and the date you, you kind of sourced them. So that when you go in here and you need to start listing some of these products, it's way more organized. And the tool we're going to be using to list products is called a go to lister. It's kind of a newer tool to the blog, but it's a big improvement over what we had to use in the past. And it's a little bit cheaper. So if you guys do end up taking massive action on Amazon, activating any of these tools, I would appreciate using the links down below. Usually I can hook you up with kind of a longer deal, a software coupon, something like that, just for kind of educating you on the tool, by the way. So let's go ahead and jump into creating a batch within go to lister. So what we're going to do first is just press create a batch. After that, we're going to go ahead and say a fulfillment type is fulfilled by Amazon. We're going to send it straight into Amazon, right? So our batch name, I'm just going to use today's date, which is July 21st, uh, 2023. So we'll go in there. Pricing rule. There's two different options here. The smart pricing is pretty cool. It bases your price on kind of the other sellers around you. I'm going to stick it with match buy box for now. You can also say who it's listed by. So if you have you know multiple people listing products for you later down the line, anything goes wrong. We have prep centers, anything like that. You can figure out, you know, where things might be going wrong in your business. The next thing you're going to do is select that ship from address. So for me, this address right here is going to be blurred, but we'll go ahead and throw that in there. The next thing you need to press is that you're going to label your products. You can send it into Amazon. And sometimes it's not a bad idea for your first couple shipments to just you know make the process even faster, pay Amazon 30 cents per item to label that products for you. Typically, I'm going to go ahead and just label the products myself. And then on the box contents, again, there's going to be a small fee if you don't do box contents. So I would highly recommend doing box contents. So after that, we're going to create a batch and now we can just start punching stuff in. So when we go back to our Google sheet over here, you know, we bought this product a week ago, two weeks ago, and we're getting it listed at this point, right? So we're not going to remember probably that we paid 18 bucks for it. But now that we have this kind of stored on our Google sheet, it's a lot easier. So we can go grab that ASIN, copy it. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in there. You're also going to want to make sure that you're listing a new condition. And then let's just say that we bought, you know, 25 of these for the sake of the example. We'll go in there, 25. Our source in this case was, you know, the, the pro soccer, whatever it was called. So we'll just go ahead and set it like that. We're going to add that as a source. Our buy cost again was 18 bucks because we kind of uh, remembered that. The condition description only applies if you are listing in used condition. Some people get started with used books, that kind of stuff. And that is a good way to start. So if you guys, especially if you guys have low capital, you could look into that. That would matter here. Doesn't matter in this case, you could, you know, change who it's been listed by. And then this is where you get down to kind of the, you know, the more technical side of things. I don't have the printers and all that kind of stuff with me here. And that's kind of a big, another big reason why I like Amazon FBA is I haven't seen any of my products in like 18 months. So I'm not gonna be able to show you like putting stickers individually on things, but I'll kind of talk a little bit about it and show you how to do it. Right. So with this, you can go ahead and do auto print. And basically what that's going to do is automatically print your labels as soon as you add it to the batch onto your Rolo label printer, your Dymo label printer. Those are the kind of the two that people typically will use. And then all you're really going to need to do is cover the UPC barcode with that sticker that prints out. And again, you can go into the videos on my channel that are just, you know, 15 minute tutorials simply on, you know, prepping a box, shipping an item in. If that process is hard, it's going to feel pretty difficult at first, but after you do it one or two times, it'll be like, it'll just be like clockwork. So a lot of these other options here are self-explanatory. You can also mouse over it to see kind of what's going on here. This allows you to send gated items onto your batch. So let's say, you know, you're going to be able to get ungated in something. You just want to get the ball rolling though, send some stuff in Amazon. It would allow you to send restricted products in. It's just going to warn you sometimes you don't end up sending products in that you are not allowed to sell on Amazon. You have to remove back to you kind of add some extra headache. So once you go ahead and plug this in here, all you're going to do is press search. It's going to go ahead and populate into the batch. You can also keep throwing ASINs on here. It'll populate. You'd have to be pretty fast for it to work with online arbitrage products. You can do that on this type of product here. So right here, you can see, you know, how many items you've got, your cost, your, your total profit that you'd make on this batch, you know, given that it would sell at that price. So this soccer ball we were looking at earlier, looks like we'd make about $300 if we bought 25 of those soccer balls here. If you, there's ever any expiration dates or anything fancy you need to throw in here, you know, if you're buying a grocery product, then you can go ahead and just edit that, throw the expiration date in there. And just as long as you've got all of the products that you've bought, get it all thrown into one single batch. You don't have to do per item. So, you know, usually you're going to have five, 10, 20 different products you're going to throw on this batch. Just make sure your source is correct, your buy cost, all that good stuff so that your actual data on Amazon on the back end is looking pretty good. And then once you do that, all you're going to have to do is go ahead and press send batch. And that's going to go ahead and send your batch over to Amazon Seller Central. So we're going to go ahead and do accept shipment. And then at this point, it looks like it has been sent over to Amazon. Amazon. We can also go ahead and do our box contents. So in this case, if we have a lot of different soccer balls, we're probably going to have multiple boxes, right? So I'm not exactly sure how many would fit in each box. Another note is that at this stage in the process, you would have used that little label stickered over the barcode on the product. Again, I've got full in-depth guides on the 
listing process, just covering most of it for this video, kind of the step-by-step, -step. but you're gonna cover the barcodes with those labels, then you're gonna start boxing them up. So when you wanna go ahead and start adding things to the box, we're just gonna go ahead and take that ASIN that we already had. You could also scan the barcode, scan the FN SKU label with the barcode scanner if you wanna do that as well. So we're just gonna add that into box one here. Then we can also say, you know, let's say 10 of them fit in this first box. Okay, let me add a new box and then, you know, do the same thing, paste the ASIN, add it, make 10 more in this next box, right? And so then we're just gonna need to add it all up to 25 units. And then once you have this done correctly, I'll just go ahead and do, let's say we threw the last five in this box as well, just for the sake of example. So now they're all kind of boxed up. We're gonna go ahead and send those box contents off to Amazon Seller Central after you do the box weight, box length, all that good stuff. And then once you plug all that information in, send it over to Amazon Seller Central, all you're gonna have to do is go to the shipments tab of Seller Central, click the shipment and then print those labels out. And it should be pretty straightforward. And you'll, and you'll typically run about 30 cents per pound, assuming you can get these boxes, you know, decently full, try to get them around 50 pounds, but not over 50 pounds. And that's going to give you kind of the best shipping economy. Make sure you use both labels. There's going to be an FBA label and a UPS label, but both of those on the side of the box. Don't cover the seam of the box. So Amazon doesn't cut it when they open the box and you should be good to go after that. So with that in mind, now you've learned how to source a product, send it in, keep everything organized and really get started on Amazon. And this is really all you guys need to do to get from zero to 10K per month. And one thing I want to really emphasize for you guys is that this process in the video is genuinely how I've seen the most successful Amazon sellers go from zero to 10K a month as quickly as possible. The ones who do it slowly overcomplicate things. They keep watching information when they already know that they should just go put in the reps. So keep it simple. Just stick with the bare basic softwares. Keep on seller have to start sourcing. And then you can play around with those other ones that we mentioned briefly there and really just go take action. Don't watch videos for 15 hours before you get the reps in. Go watch a video practice it, buy some items, see what happens. That's going to be the biggest thing that helps you guys grow your Amazon is getting that real world experience. And since you made it this far, I also do want to mention that we have a step-by-step -step course on this. If you guys want to invest in your education, invest in growing your Amazon business even faster, you can check out the FBA roadmap down below. That comes with a two week money back guarantee. And it's going to come with 20 plus hours of content, a private discord, weekly Zoom calls with myself and Miles, who are the founders of seven figure Amazon sellers. And it's genuinely one of the best resources out there for an online arbitrage business. Again, I was super skeptical of buying information when I first started. So I built the kind of the two week money back guarantee in the program as something that I would have wanted back in the day. If you want to keep it bootstrap it yourself, you're more than welcome, but you will grow faster if you jump inside. But I really hope you guys got a ton of value out of this video. Please let me know down below if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that. I'm always happy to answer those, help you out as you're getting your Amazon journey started. If you guys did find value out of today's video, please forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, all that good stuff helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. But I really appreciate you guys watching this video and I will see you next time.